Digitizing your knitting and crochet patterns and making your own online store to sell them in is way easier than you'd think. With today's video sponsor, Payhip, along with the free version of Canva, I'm going to show you how you can go from a real-life crochet sweater to a digital pattern store with no upfront cost and no prior techie skills required. Then, there will officially be no reason for you to have DM for patterns in your bio anymore. Step one for writing your own patterns is to read other patterns. You wouldn't try to write a fiction novel without ever picking up a book before, right? So read many patterns from big brands to bloggers to indie designers and get a feel for how they're written. Notice their differences and similarities. And you'll see that there's a big range for you to play in when it comes to how patterns are written. Then what I do is keep my phone by me as I work on my project. And I'll write down what I'm doing on the Google Keep app on my phone. If there's info I need to calculate later, I'll just leave it blank for now while I make my sample. You may want to write out your whole pattern theoretically before you work up a sample, and that's okay too. Just don't make the whole thing without writing anything down, because you're just setting yourself up for a big ol' headache, trust me. When I've got my sample made and taken some pictures, I head over to canva.com, and with a free account, you can design pretty much anything. But in our case, we want to make something printable. So you can go to custom size and put in 8.5 by 11 inches for US size printer paper. Canva has lots of templates, but none for crochet patterns specifically. If you want to see how I turned a resume template into a knitting pattern, I'll link that video down below. But today we're going to start from scratch, and I'll share some of my design sensibilities when it comes to patterns. Starting off with the title page, I like to keep the photos in grayscale to help folks save money on printer ink. And if the image has a lot of contrast, I'll even come up here to increase the transparency so it'll use even less ink when printed. Make sure you've got a title for your pattern, and I include some branding for my website and a little copyright at the bottom. And I like to add pops of color where I can, just for more branding, like I did with this difficulty graphic here, and a little yarn ball from Canva's design assets. And there's your title page. And I'm continuing to grab Canva's little text and graphic elements using them in the next page, which is where I like to get all the contextual details out of the way. So we'll do materials, and I'll put the yarn I use for the pattern and the hook size, along with gauge and sizing information. And then I like to do a little overview where I kind of write out in passive voice how the pattern's written, almost like a abstract for a scientific paper. Here I'll bring in what I wrote down while I was working on my pattern, which got synced up to the Keep app in my Gmail, so it's available on my laptop now even though I typed it up on my phone. And I'll fill in any missing measurements or size info, and double check for typos and things like that. I do spend a lot of time nudging around the text boxes to, to try to make sure that all the information is legible on as few pages as possible. But if I need more pages, I'll continue to add more pages and just say, Pattern Continued. I'll also usually have a page for finishing and seaming info. Then let's talk sizing diagrams. Since my sweater was a simple shape, I like to recreate a rough diagram with shapes and lines from inside Canva. Then I can add expected measurements for each size. I think it's fair to not put a diagram in an indie pattern. Just listing important measurements still provides valuable info that helps your readers. But if you can pull it off, a lot of people find diagrams helpful. Then sometimes I'll add more color photos and just instruct the reader not to print this page to save ink. Finally, you can put a little outro page. I like to mention that people are free to sell items that they make using my pattern since I get that question a lot. And in Canva, it's easy to add little social icons and turn them into clickable links. And that way people can actually click on them and follow you if they're viewing the PDF while online. When your pattern is done, you can save it and select PDF print from the drop down menu when you go to download. And once you've got your PDF pattern file, you can take it over to Payhip. And with Payhip, the free plan is all you need to start selling your own knitting and crochet patterns. What's cool about Payhip's free plan is that you get all of their features. There are no locked premium features that you would usually expect. You just pay a higher percentage of your sales when you do make a sale. To start doing that, you'll create an account. 
and set up your store by connecting either or both PayPal and Stripe to process payment. Then you can add your first product. So we'll add a new product and you can pick from all these different things to sell like courses and memberships, which other platforms often charge extra for. You can also easily do bundles of patterns, which is really hard to do on like Etsy, for example. But we're just going to click digital product because we are selling a file and we'll upload our file, grab that pattern PDF we just made. That's what people will receive when they purchase this listing. Add a title. I like to specify that it is a pattern and choose a price. Something between five to $10 is pretty standard these days for patterns. Upload a bunch of cute pictures of your samples. And you can rearrange your photos to put your best ones first and then write a little description. These usually take me a while, so I'm gonna jump ahead. You can have as much fun as you want here, but I just like to make sure I include a hook size and the yarn weight used and some details about what you get when you purchase a pattern. Then at the end, I want people to know if there's ever an issue finding their download that they can reach out to me. And then that's it. You can click add product and you're ready to start selling your pattern. They'll even give you this little link. You can pop into your social channels and folks can buy that file directly from this link. It'll take you to a nice looking product page. My page looks like this because I applied a theme to my shop. Payhip has several themes you can apply to your shop with one click and lots of style features and fonts will automatically be set up. But you can also customize the look of your storefront to no end with their very intuitive drag and drop site builder. They have all of these common website elements that you can just drag onto your page and customize. Here are just a few examples of crafters with sites made on Payhip, and you can see that they're all completely unique, fully functional websites. And even though I already have my own website, I'm considering switching to Payhip as my payment platform because the math is math and for me. Plus Payhip recently launched a marketplace and you need a Payhip store already to join the marketplace. So if that really takes off and starts growing, I wanna be there for that. So if you wanna get started for free, blogging and selling on your own cute website, I think Payhip is a great option. They even let you run coupons in your shop. And speaking of coupons, if you stayed till the end, you can use code watched till the end and get this pattern that I featured in the video for $1. So go ahead and give my Payhip store a try as a customer and see if you like it. Thanks again to Payhip for sponsoring today's video and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.